because if you are here, that means that your child or you or someone you know or you're just interested has CACC, uh, otherwise known as ACC, or the long form, uh, complete agenesis of the corpus callosum. And the reason why I wanted to make this was because probably 13 months ago that my daughter, who I was pregnant with at the time, was missing a part of her brain. It was probably one of the most, probably the scariest thing I think I've ever um, had to endure. And there was not a whole lot out there for me to look at, to read, that wasn't full of medical terminology or worst case scenarios or just things that didn't really pertain to our situation. So fast forward to over a year later to now, uh, post quarantine, I thought that it would be a good idea. I have been um, showing monthly uh, about my daughter on Instagram and Facebook and through that I have had other parents from all over the world. I had someone from London, England yesterday. I've had someone from uh, the States and they are so happy to have found somebody else. Um, so this is what this is for. It's for information to listen to and not every situation is a worst case scenario. So to go back to the beginning, um, Ada was a rainbow baby. If you don't know what that is, she is a baby born after miscarriage. My husband and I had been trying for quite some time and it wouldn't wasn't working, so I did a surrogacy in between, hoping that would jumpstart my system. That didn't work, so we met with an OB and she put me on fertility drugs. The first round was successful, however, I did end up with a miscarriage and that was probably one of the most horrifying experiences of my life and I think I'll do a separate video about that one and then we did another round of the fertility drugs and it was successful and with that we got Ada. It was a very typical pregnancy there was nothing really crazy about it I was nauseous with her which I wasn't with my previous pregnancies and we went for a routine 20 week ultrasound and I went and I met with my midwife and she had said everything looked good. Uh, there was just one image that they couldn't really see, so they'd like to do more. And at that point, I had had quite a few ultrasounds with my son. So at that point, I just said, well, can we just wait? I don't feel like it's necessary. Do you feel like it's necessary? And she said, nope, there was no, there was no need to put any emphasis on it. So we put it on the back burner. Eight weeks later, at 28 weeks, I went and I had an ultrasound. I went to the General Hospital in Ottawa, which is hindsight, high-risk center, which didn't click in. I just thought it was the place with uh, an opening. So I went in, the ultrasound tech came, and she said, the OB's probably going to come and take a look, and he'll either talk to you here or he'll talk to you in his office. Sure, okay. He comes in at this point of having a vaginal ultrasound, which I should also think, hindsight, why am I having a vaginal ultrasound if it's just routine? Um, and then he's done and he said, I'll meet you. I'll come with me. Uh, we'll, have, we'll chat. Keep in mind, I'm alone. My husband didn't come with me to this ultrasound. So we sit down in the room. I'm there by myself for a good five minutes and my heart sinks because I know that something's wrong. I don't know what it is, but I'm terrified. So what I actually did, I took out my phone and started uh, audio recording and I'm going to clip it in here. It's long so you don't need to listen to it all, but it's informative and you can really, you hear me get in the, the news firsthand. Um, it makes me choked up just thinking about it um so he sits me down and he says that he was looking at her brain 
and he did not see this uh, corpus callosum. At this point, I had no idea what it was, no idea what it did, what it meant. I was just terrified because my baby was missing her brain. Um, so naturally, I was very upset. I remember it very clearly. I must have looked like a mad woman going through that hospital, bawling my eyes out. My ticket isn't printing for parking. So I go to information desk and there's this lovely retired old lady who can clearly see how distraught I am and she sends me upstairs to go. I try different, anyways it works. I sat, once I got to my car, I lost complete control. I, I felt that it was my fault because I was saying to myself, we needed drugs to have this baby. If I had not forced it, this would not have happened. I did this to her. It's my fault. So I called my husband, or I texted him when I said, because he was at work, and I said, do you want me to tell you how it went now, or do you want to wait till we get home? He calls me immediately, and I tell him, and I think he's in shock. I mean, we don't that day was just such a crazy day and we had no information we had no idea what it was and when you google it a lot of it is worst case scenarios so I then called my best friends and I was I was just beside myself I couldn't get over it it almost felt as painful as the miscarriage that I had experienced a few months prior And we went to a cottage that weekend with his mother. His mom came with us. I don't think I have ever been around other people and been so down. I could not, I just couldn't get past it. I had my mother-in-law listen to it. I had my sister listen to it. And they were both saying, oh, you know, like, you never know. We don't know what's going to happen. And obviously, and they're trying to be positive. But at this point, I was devastated because I had forced this baby to be. And now she was now being born without a piece of her brain. Um, so the corpus callosum is right in the middle of your brain. And it allows both hemispheres to communicate with each other. I didn't know that at the time. And I was waiting. I can't remember. We had so many tests. I had to get a fetal MRI. And that was really weighing heavy on me because they were going to see if there was anything else wrong with her body. If anything had not developed properly. Because if it's just the brain, if it's just this, the corpus callosum, odds are more... In, so in our favor. So it was, I, I got the results just a few days before my baby shower and I didn't tell anybody because I figured everyone's going to be in one place. I'm just going to tell everybody there. Everyone knew how upset we were. And I had the fetal ultrasound, which was an experience in itself. I had to go to the children's hospital and they put me in the children's size MRI machine and a pregnant woman, an overweight pregnant woman at that doesn't fit well. But I got to watch Grey's Anatomy. It was good. Um, so my doctor, my OB, called me at home at like 7 at night. And I'm so grateful that he did that because it was a Friday. And otherwise I would have had to have waited until the next week. And he didn't want to do that because he knew. I mean, he's a, he's a high-risk OB. He knows how these families feel. So I'm very grateful that he called that night. And... From the MRI, the fetal MRI, there was, her body was fine. Nothing was wrong with her heart, nothing was wrong with her bowels, her kidneys, her liver, her face, nothing. So that was such a load off. And they had said that when she, after she is born, they're probably going to do another MRI just to reconfirm everything and not have my body in the way as a barrier. So I told everybody at the baby shower, and obviously everyone was 
really happy about it. Um, I really wanted to have a home birth, but, and even my midwife was saying it was fine, but then my OB, I had to be transferred to care to the high-risk team. My OB was saying that he's not comfortable with that, and they ended up switching over my care. And that was more because of my fear, as opposed to them telling me that's what it needed to be done. And uh, I met with a geneticist, and I'll also put the clip in. And meeting him was far easier. I mean, it was still emotional, but it was far easier for me to meet with him than it was to meet with Obi because he was so much more positive. Um, it could have been the accent or the, the language barrier between the Obi and I, but the geneticist, he was with me for five minutes. Five minutes, no problems. I mean, it's like, you want to go to the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Center? Perfect. You want to have a home birth? Sure. My Obi wasn't comfortable with that again, so... I felt pressured into going to the high-risk hospital, but also because we didn't know what Ada's outcome was going to be once she was Earthside, when she was born. Um, and the children's hospital is literally right across. There's not even a street. You know, it's the same area. If you're from Ottawa, Ontario, you know the children's hospital is right beside the general. So that's why I was there. And there was a team ready in case we needed it. Um didn't. One thing that I feel that that I've come across with a lot of parents um, is the fear and different countries. So correct me if I'm wrong, you can comment if I'm wrong, but from my experience, from what I have seen, especially in the States, I've had a few from England that have told me that they have been recommended to terminate and they're at 32, 34 weeks pregnant. This video, this channel, is to prove to you that that is not necessary. I cannot um, talk about children who have other issues. If they have the CACC plus something else, that's completely different. However, if your child or if you have been told that your baby, whether you're pregnant or not, has the agenesis of the corpus callosum, it will be okay. That's what I want this for. I want those parents who are scared, I want to give them relief. I want to give them something to hold on to because there is so much unknown and it is so terrifying. And I could not find that when I was pregnant and I so wish I had. I did find a Facebook group who have, it is women and men all over the world with children specifically born in 2019. However, they do, there are people with children who, with other disabilities, but they're, you know, we're all just sharing our stories and we're all just trying to be positive for one another. And it was so amazing to feel that sense of community. We're evolving our children who we don't know what to expect from. So the basis of this channel is to give parents hope and I hope I can do that for you and I hope that you come back. I'm going to do, this is just a quick one and I'm going to have many more videos about Ada. She's doing amazing. There will be more videos of her, pictures of her. Um, she's thriving. She's meeting things slower at a slower race for sure but she's meeting those milestones. And I hope that I can help you along your journey and you can help me along mine. We're all in this together. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.